About halfway through Vice, Andy McKay's masterly biography of former Vice President Dick Cheney, who's played with uncanny conviction by Christian Bale, it seems as though the Wyoming politician's career has reached an impasse. It's 1979, and despite cardiac problems, Cheney has won a seat in Congress with the invaluable help of his wife Lynn, Amy Adams, and is appointed Secretary of Defense by George Bush Sr. Later, he becomes chairman and CEO of Halliburton, the huge multinational oil company. But then Mary, Alison Pill, his younger daughter, reveals she's a lesbian, and her father decides to support her, retire from politics and from business, and raise horses in his native state. The end. The credits roll. But they're interrupted by the sound of a telephone. The Cheney story is not yet over. He's invited by George W. Bush, Sam Rockwell, the black sheep of the Bush family, to be his presidential running mate. And the story continues. I can't believe they've got that poor boy running for president, is Lynn's attitude. This, then, is no linear chronological biography, but a dazzlingly constructed and completely gripping study of a man and, by extension, a country. The film uses a narrator, an everyman named Kurt Jesse Plemons, who is sometimes heard but not seen, and at other times seen in a variety of manifestations, as a fireman on 9-11, for example, and as a soldier in Afghanistan. In an early scene, Kate's voiceover notes that as the news of the attack on America on that fateful day in 2001 came through to the centre of government, there was confusion, fear and uncertainty. But Cheney saw only opportunity. This is a true story, the opening title asserts, but goes on to note that Cheney is a notoriously secretive politician, and so there may be limitations to the truth, but we did our fucking best. Steve Carell plays Donald Rumsfeld, who was Cheney's boss for a while, and like almost everyone else in this near-perfect cast, is amazingly convincing in the role. The Rise and Rise of Cheney is a drama of Shakespearean grandeur, and McKay makes this point literally in one scene where Lynn and Cheney burst into 16th century dialogue. The scene in which, in the lead-up to the invasion of Iraq in 2003, Colin Powell, Tyler Perry, is forced to make a speech to the UN containing facts he knows not to be true, is just one of the film's dramatic highlights. Cheney convinces the inexperienced George W. to put him in charge of mundane assignments like foreign policy, energy and the military. And while the future vice president negotiates over ways of giving himself more power than any VP ever had before, McKay inserts images of fish taking a bait. As the details of Cheney's career accumulate and the film concludes with an ironic rendition of America, that celebratory song from West Side Story, we are, I think, experiencing the conclusion of the best American film of the year. I'm giving Vice five stars. Thank you.